I want to thank you for uh, coming today. And I also want to thank those protesters and demonstrators who were responsible in the exercising of their First Amendment rights uh, yesterday and yesterday evening and night. Uh, they served as an example of peaceful demonstration and dialogue that will help us to move forward to a positive and substantive reform and forge better relationships between the police division and the community. As I said yesterday, we, are, we will and we continue to encourage uh, peaceful protests and demonstration. However, however, we will not tolerate activities that cross the line. Uh, the majority of the protests, the majority of the protesters yesterday were peaceful, although aggressive at the end of the day, but still peaceful. In the evening, however, there were some who crossed the line, and as a result, uh, they were arrested, and uh, they crossed the line, in some cases, by assaulting bystanders, which, again, we would not tolerate. Uh, so I'm going to have the chief come up and talk to you about, um, uh, give you an update as to where we are, where we anticipate going today, and then give you some indication as to the number of arrests uh, that were made yesterday and why. Chief. Thanks, Mayor. Good morning. Uh, first of all, um, as the mayor stated, the majority of the uh, protesters and the protest activity yesterday uh, remain uh, peaceful, although at, at sometimes aggressive, but still peaceful and within the bounds that uh, we expect from uh, people here in Cleveland. Um, we uh, made sure that we allowed people to express their First Amendment rights, uh, to express their, um, sometimes their anger and frustration uh, about the events that have unfolded uh, here in the city and across the country. And we gave people the space uh, and provided a safe environment for them to do that. Throughout the uh, early, um, Part of the day, uh, those activities again remain uh, peaceful. Uh, as we began to um, go towards the early afternoon hours, uh, things got a little more aggressive. Protesters actually blocked uh, one of our major thoroughfares, Route 2. This is a dangerous activity and we, we try to discourage it and try to prevent it uh, because, you know, uh, a highway with cars going 60 miles an hour is a lot different than a uh, public roadway with a 25 mile per hour speed limit. So at that time, officers moved in and basically gave warnings to those protesters that were blocking Route 2 and they dispersed and got back on the uh, normal roadway. Protesters, uh, after uh, a certain time period on the west side of town, came back downtown and entered Tower City Center, uh, one of our downtown shopping areas. Uh, they became disruptive. The officers of the Division of Police, along with security from Tower City, uh, was able to get those individuals out of Tower City, at which time uh, the businesses in Tower City uh, closed for the remainder of the day, uh, just as a uh, precaution. As stated earlier, the protests basically remained peaceful uh, until the latter part of the day when people uh, began to get more aggressive and at times uh, started to cross the line. As I stated yesterday, we would not allow people to commit acts of violence either against property or persons uh, in this event and officers moved in as soon as uh, those things uh, began to happen. On East 4th and Huron Road, one of the protesters actually uh, picked up a sign from one of the restaurants on the sidewalk and threw it at a patron, injuring that pa patron and hitting him in the head. That protester, officers moved to arrest him. Other protesters interfered with that lawful arrest and three people in total were arrested. The main protester for felonious assault uh, the other protesters for crimes ranging from obstruction of justice to aggravated rioting.
The protests continued from that point and moved to an area of East 9th and Euclid where we had incidents of protesters actually pepper spraying patrons that were seated at restaurants in their patio areas or walking down the street. Officers again moved in and made arrest. Later in the night, we had a incident that happened at East 4th Street and Euclid on the 4th Street restaurant row where protesters again attacked bystanders. At this time, officers moved in and the order was given to disperse the protests because it was becoming increasingly violent, not so much against officers, but against normal everyday citizens enjoying downtown. Officers made several arrests at that time and orders were given for the protesters to disperse. Of course, most of them refused, at which point we made several arrests uh, as the night went on and we attempted to disperse the protest. This all culminated uh, later on that evening in another confrontation on West 6th and Johnson Court where protesters were again ordered due to the violence to disperse. They refused, at which time we brought in enough officers to make several arrests. Those arrests were as follows. 71 total individuals were arrested. There were, there were approximately uh, 39 males arrested, approximately 16 females arrested, and out of that there were also some juveniles arrested and other adults. We only moved in to make arrests when things got violent and protesters refused to disperse. We wanted to make sure that people understand we're gonna help you in this process, but if things turn violent, as we stated in the beginning, we will take action to preserve safety in the city. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. And it's hard for me to see you, so if I'm... Uh, there, it's Bill Sappel with 19 Action News. I'm just wondering, yes. how is the city gonna respond uh, to uh, the, the protesters if they approach uh, the queue this evening for uh, the playoff game? Well, as they, uh, I'll let the chief respond as from a police perspective. But um, yesterday, they uh, were, uh, the mass body of the protest was at the uh, progressive field right after the Indians won the game. So the crowd and the protesters kind of came together and we managed that. And so there is, I'll let the chief tell you the details of what he may have planned for the queue tonight, but we already had that experience yesterday. And, and, and as a result of that, there was no activity that we would deem to be arrestable at that time, even though it did get pretty aggressive. Well, I, I should have stated uh, at the beginning, our posture is going to be the same as it has been uh, throughout uh, this process. Our officers will not be in riot gear unless it's appropriate for the situation. Our officers will be in Class B uniform. They will be escorting protesters uh, throughout the city. And we want to make sure that protesters understand there is a dividing line between uh, public property and right of way and private property. Uh, such as what some of the sports arenas and, and venues have. Uh, we've made it clear to protesters in the past uh, that the uh, various um, venues in this city, uh, be it an entertainment venue or a sports venue, uh, have the right to police their property and to uh, require people to act accordingly while on their property. And if that person doesn't comply, they have the right to eject that person or to have that person arrested by a law enforcement officer for a criminal trespassing. So we will make that clear to everyone. Uh, there's a dividing line between the public right of way and the public sidewalk and the public streets and what you can do versus being on private property and breaking the law. And the various venues and sports arenas and, and things like that downtown, they understand that and we make that clear to people that they have that authority and that right to enforce um, things on their private property. 
So we'll, we'll maintain the same stance. Our officers will be out, they'll escort people. And again, we ask people to remain peaceful and, and we'll help this process along. But again, we won't tolerate people being violent at any time. And traveling with some of the demonstrators yesterday, I noticed that they were very concerned about who was videotaping them. Obviously, the news crews, our cameras are large, they see them, but they were also very concerned about what looked like private citizens in plain clothes that were videotaping them, uh, either, I say video, but either with their cell phones or smaller cameras. What is the police department's use of cameras? And are you guys out there actually uh, trying to uh, catch these uh, folks, uh, presumably some of these folks with pepper spray, with cameras as well? We have officers uh, that are in with our officers deployed out there protecting the protesters uh, that do have video capability, uh, that are videotaping the actions our officers take to make sure we document that. And, and of course, as you said, everybody out there has a camera or cell phone. And if people are walking down a public street, they're subject to be filmed by all those people that want to capture what's going on in the city at this time. Uh, but our officers are out there to capture the actions of our officers to make sure we document things properly. And if, and if you saw any of the feed coming across the uh, internet, I guess, you would have seen that uh, most of that feed was by demonstrators. And the demonstrators were filming themselves as to what they were doing and filming each other uh, as to what the other person was doing, making statements. So it was. There was a lot of video going on by uh, almost every demonstrator in the feed that I saw. Yes. Anybody else? Chief, could you break down the arrests and question rate on the 71? What are the types of charges that people are on? Uh, sure. Uh, the charges range from felonious assault, aggravated rioting, obstruction of justice, unlawful congregation, and failure to disperse, amongst others. And what's the status of those arrestees in the moment of charge? The people arrested last night uh, on misdemeanors. We have 24 hours to charge. We're in that process of reviewing some of that video that's out there, both on the internet, online, and that our officers actually filmed while we were out there making arrest. Uh, we will charge misdemeanors within 24 hours and felonies within 36 hours. We're in that process right now. Anybody else? In December, you guys seem to largely take a hands-off stance with the protesters who were out there for the uh, it didn't seem like yesterday that was the case. Is there a, a shift in philosophy of how you're handling these protests? No, no, there's no shift. Uh, and you, you'd have to kind of clarify what you mean by hands off, and now we're not doing a hands off. Just sort of letting them protest, walking around the streets, letting them go. Well, that happened yesterday. That happened. Uh, Before, it seemed like the protesters got blocked into that alleyway and had nowhere to go. Yes, that was after. I don't know, dozens of commands by our officers on the scene to disperse. And after dozens, or I wouldn't say dozens, but after multiple assaults had taken place and we're trying to identify individuals, get individuals arrested, uh, at that point uh, we deemed that things had gotten unsafe, uh, not only for the general public but for the protesters and the officers themselves, and we made the decision to disperse. And you know, when people are given a command to disperse from what started off as a lawful protest and kind of, you know, uh, degenerated into uh, random, what we saw, random acts of violence against people just standing on the street, then we have to move in and enforce our laws. And that's what we did. Anyone else? And finally, Mayor, if you could tell us, what is your message to anybody who's thinking about coming to any of the downtown venues this evening? Uh, they're obviously going to be safe. Uh, what's your advice for that? Oh, you mean the people who want to frequent those venues? Well, then that, uh, what we found yesterday, even when some of these assaults occurred, 
that uh, people continue to enjoy themselves downtown. There were some venues that closed up, uh, as, as the chief mentioned, but in a general sense, uh, people still went to the restaurants, they went to the games, they, they did all those things, and even when the protest was going on, when the protest left the area in which they were uh, frequenting uh, a venue, they stayed there. They did not just leave. So I would say that uh, come into downtown Cleveland, come into our neighborhoods, enjoy yourself. And, and if there are protesters, we will be there along with those protesters and those protesters have a right to protest, to express whatever opinion that they have, as long as they don't cross the line. If they cross the line, we will deal with them accordingly and, and, and the citizens should uh, not be concerned about that and that they should come downtown and enjoy themselves. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.